intro is saved before anything. No, everything is saved. Everything's good. All right. We're up live. About to go share this shit, shit. All right. Do that now. Yo, my son's drinking that fabuloso. You gotta, you gotta take it down, bro. That's what that's what Papa Trump said to do. <laughs> he wants to drink that fabuloso. Ralph uh, from um, Choked Out is drinking that fabuloso, boy. Fucking like, it's like mainline and heroin, bro. <laughs> so we're doing it with Ajax. Gotta do it one way or another. Yep, we gotta figure it out. All right, shared, shared, shared. All right, let me just. Get yeah, ready? Oh, you saw Henry commented? Yeah, boy, ready? Hold on. Turbuckle Tabloid, cutting a promo. Cutting a promo, ladies and gentlemen. Early in the morning here on a Saturday morning, which means I was working this weekend. Yep, that, that, that is the call. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I was working this weekend. So, uh, yeah, you get Saturday morning Turbuckle Tabloid. Right after breakfast, hey, after your cereal. Hey, it's better than um, Saturday morning cartoons anymore. No, no, no. Now you have you get you get a uh, the breakfast of champions is with Jay the Red Santianowski. And by the way, um, Henry, I see your comment. He said Matt Olsi did a great show last night. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Did he really? Did he? Did he really? I appreciate that, brother. Thank I'm fine. you. I'm, I'm Thank happy. I'm happy that he's taking the fucking alleviating some of the weight that I've been carrying with the show. Oh, go fuck yourself, okay, LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yourself. Um, before, before we continue on cutting a promo, I do have two, uh, before I do, hold on one second. Um, we have Ben here. We have Marco. Mar ben, I hope you are safe in the pond, brother. I hope everything's good over there in your home and you're safe and you're doing more TikToks. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Please do. You, you do pretty much entertain me with your TikToks. Um, some of them are, um, very um interesting. Yeah, so that's gotta... that's the only word we could use for it. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. Um, but uh, Marco, thanks for coming in here. Mula Mook, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we got um Henry and uh, Ryan's here. Nicole, who else is watching? Yeah. Oh, um, the Trump's world. watching. The world. So, um, before we continue, we're cutting a promo. Cutting a promo this week will be. A, how does wrestling bounce back? I see you a lot of you guys, I see Dominic is in there as a uh, he's an independent wrestler. The discussion would be how does wrestling bounce back from this? What's the measures that they take to bring it back open to the fan base or what needs to be occur? Like I said, we're not business guys. We don't really know shit. We're just shooting from the fucking hip. What we would do from the WWE's the the all elites to the indie scene. Like how do they 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 come back and bounce back? But before I continue, I do have to. Uh, I do have to take this on a personal note, and I'm doing this live because for weeks I've been sitting here discussing about my thoughts about this whole um, COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic that we got going on, and um, discussing about my thoughts, what I feel about it, how weird it is, how, 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 how it, just, just, it just, none of this shit makes sense. And um, this past week, it actually hit home with me and my family this past week. Um, we lost a family member and my family, my my Uncle Fred passed away this past week. Uh, he- um, Uncle Fred? No, 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 not that one. No, not, not Uncle Fred. No, 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 not that, not him. Oh, oh my God, I almost my, lost it. Yeah, no, 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 my Uncle Freddie. My, my, my uncle, my, my direct uncle, my mother's sister, my, my mother's brother passed away. Right. And uh, so if you're lost, brother. Yeah, I forgot that we had an Uncle Fred in our in our circle. I was like, no, no, no. Oh my him. god, I almost lost it. I was like, oh my god. No, no. I, should, I should have did it in Spanish. You don't know Theo Freddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Been... I'll be like, all right. Um, no, my my Uncle Freddy, who uh, for for years he was he was uh, struggling with COPD, and um, 
honestly, the the doctors had given him maybe when he was diagnosed in 2015, they were only, they only gave him one to two years to live. Oof. And um, he made it to 2020. Um, and COVID, he got he got COVID nineteen. It took him over. And when you have COPD, it's 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 not it's not an easy thing to to bounce back from. I'm not. I can't sit here and eulogize the man as this um, great and stoic human being. Human being, because to be honest with you, he and I hadn't spoken in wow. I have to say, oh, like about five years. It's been probably more. Wow. Probably more. Why the why why this why this time apart? Well, you know, you know stuff I, gets in the way. I don't, no, no, not even that. And, and, and not to give, bring up you know dirty laundry, especially like you know, speak ill of the dead. It's just basically he wasn't really that of a good man. He was a very angry, bitter, sour, surly individual. And you know, we you know, know a few of those. Yeah, and he um. He just was very, just set in his ways, and, and, and it was always like this, this, this tension between himself, you know, certain members of my family and myself. It was, um, it wasn't easy. I think the last time I spoke to him, it was actually probably like a uh, couple of couple of years ago. Matter of fact, it had to be around when Terminal Tablet started because I. I ran into him in the hospital. I was leaving, and he was going into an appointment. And he he said to me, goes, "Hey man, I heard you do uh, one of those wrestling podcasts. Why don't you put me on it?" And I'm like, "Oh Jesus, for what? Nobody wants to hear you talk about fucking fucking gorgeous George or fucking Bobo Brazil. Nobody want to hear that shit." <laughs> so basically, Jim Cornette yeah, trying like, to get on the show. Yeah, I was like, it was like Jim Cornette trying to get on the show. I was like, nobody, nobody want to hear that shit. I ain't playing those matches during my stream, so I'll tell you that. Yeah, but he was a very, he, like I said, it was very difficult to 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 deal with. And I must tell you, uh, a week before he passed, when he went into the um, when he went into the hospital, you know, they discussed uh, the possibility, you know, of, of what might happen. And he's like, you know, signing the DNRs and going on ventilators and stuff. And he said. You know what? What would be the point for me to stay alive and be a pain in the ass to the rest of you motherfuckers and all you assholes? Is that what you want? You want me? You know what? Yeah, sign me up for that. Yeah, yeah fuck that, because I, I wow. still want to be a dickhead to the rest of you guys. Wow, very I said, hard you know, in living color. I said, you know what? At least he's consistent. You know what I'm saying? You, you, yeah. you got to keep it a buck. At least he's consistent because, right? You know, there's people who have this come to God moment when you know you're at death's door and you know you start having these these um regrets and these hippocratic moments of what I should have done and what I didn't know listen he kept it a buck you know what I'm saying he knew he was a yeah. fucking asshole coming in and he was going an ass he was being going out the world an asshole so you can't right. you can't, listen, he, can't listen, be mad he, at that he went out his way exactly but before um before I cut this off, because like I said, I can, I, usually at funerals or wakes, I, for my family, I'm the one who's, who does this, the, the talking. I do the eulogies. Yes, you do. And I'm like, I, 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 I don't... I, we, first of all, it's it's probably not going to be possible for us to have a wake with all this going on because of right. with the COVID and stuff like that. But um, if, How's if, best friend doing? She's fine. She's okay. She, you know, like I said, it, it, it's just... They they didn't have a really good relationship either. It was just really... It was, it's tough. Right, but you know, at the end of the day, that's her brother, and she loves him. And but just you know, just between us and who's watching, she didn't really like him. But that's different. Okay? Right, right, right. But you know, but she came, you know, she came to terms with herself and all that stuff. You know, that at the end of the day, that's her brother. And regardless if he's on Earth and he's not, then you know, they they were family. Right. Uh, but this is the uncle that I've always talked about on the show that introduced me to the world of sports and introduced me to the world of wrestling. Oh, uh, he was an independent wrestler in the seventies. He wrestled under a, a lucha mask in the in the neighborhood. They used to have a, a a promotion not too far from where we lived at. And I remember one day going. I was in his room and I was going through one of the dresser drawers, and I pulled out on his lucha mask. And I wasn't sure like why he had this. I thought he was into some kinky shit. I don't know what the fuck it was. And I ran into him and I said, "Theo, what's this?" 
and he goes, oh, man, you found it? Ah, oh, man, that's my lucha mask. And he started telling me the stories of him being a wrestler. And, wow. Uh, yeah, he, he wrestled under the name King Cobra. He, he had a... It's out of a movie, son. Yeah, he had. He found the mask. Oh, that's my 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 mask. It was green too. That's weird. It was kind of like the mask, and um, (laughs) it was like like the fucking Puerto Rican version of Nacho Libre and shit. So um, Nacho Sazon. Yeah, some shit like Adobo Libre or some shit. So he he was telling me the stories about you know who he wrestled with and you know kind of kind of what got him into the business and shit like that. He, He didn't wrestle for a long time, but he you know he had a love for it and introduced me to sports and introduced me to wrestling sports. I became a big sports guy through him. He used to take me to baseball games and, and, and stuff like that. Right. But, oh, it was always a dick about shit too, because you, you teach me about sports, right? But yet get mad about the teams that I like. I was like, what was he a Yankee fan? Uh, uh, no, he was actually a Pirates fan. No, no, right? Had, yeah, it would be some shit like that because, because of Roberto Clemente. And that's exactly how you say it. <laughs> Roberto Clemente. That was my guy, Roberto Clemente. So he would, <laughs> he would say stuff like, uh, like I couldn't be a Giant and a Met fan. Nah, there's no way you can't be a Giant. You have to be either Jets and a Mets fan or Giants or and, and a Yankees fan. I you agree. Can't. And you see, you agree. So both I of you agree. are fucking morons. So no, I, I'm kidding. But like, so I go to my, so I go. I, I remember telling my mom. That's a stereotype, though. Yeah, because that, those, those those things are paired together. But that's, that's not well, how it's it only is. paired together because the Mets play. I mean, the Jets played in Shea Stadium, so it was like closer to the. Queens and because they rhyme. Yeah, I guess so. So, um, I remember telling my mom that I was like, "Yo, Theo told me that I can't be a, a giant and a Mets fan." She's like, "Fuck him, be like whoever the fuck you like." <laughs> exactly, man. Like, yeah, that, 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 that was me at six. Okay, I know, so pe- goes, I know, pe- I know people that are Met fans, and then for football, they're fucking Steelers fans. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean. but it, that, that's just the type of guy he was. The, he was, he was, he was like that. It was his way of the highway. Yeah, he was just, just, just a real like he was a dick like that. But like I said, um, he was besides my grandfather, the the male figure in the household. You, you know, he took me out to parks and stuff like that, and we did you know stuff like that. And he always would tell me. You know, you're my favorite nephew, and I'm like, I, you know, I'd be like, oh, that's nice. And yeah, that sounds like a threat. He, yeah, yeah, he yeah. yeah. He, said, yeah he, sounded, like, he sounded mad saying that. Yeah, it sounded like he was real angry. Like, you know, you're my favorite nephew, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, being scared and shit. It's like, yeah, I guess. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 I want to give my goodbyes to my uncle Freddie, who passed away this week from COPD associated to COVID nineteen, and thank you. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have this love for wrestling and this fucking pain in the ass uh, addiction of watching every fucking night that I can. Anything that involves wrestling or stuff that goes on. Even Impact. For the past 40 years, everything's been fucking wrestling in my life. And because of you, I might not have had this podcast. And this is my goodbye and my salute to you. Thank you. Uncle Freddy, Theo, bendición, and um, see you on the other side, brother. So, cutting a promo this week, ladies and gentlemen, we discuss how does wrestling make a comeback? How does it, speaking of death, how does it make a resurrection? Seeing as old as how does it rise from the ashes, not from the grave, which is non-participation of the 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 fans not being in the audience. How how has the the wrestling community been able to deal with what's going on and what's going to happen on the come up so guys if you want to call in the phone lines are open it's there for your pleasure delicious delicious pleasure yummy 315-371-435 excuse me 4367 315-371-4367 so guys let's see um First of all, when it comes to the indie scene, right? Okay. How is it that the fan base is actually going to trust to go back into the the, the crowds, the, the 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 arenas, the the bingo halls, the 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 um, the, the, the handball the, courts, the the parks, McDonald's, the, McDonald's playpen, the the Walmart parking lines? How is it that the fans are going to be able to gravitate back into being able to trust their fellow wrestling fans? 
And I'm, um, you're going to want to sit next to another COVID fucking guy? Like, what are we doing for, here? For, for me, I think when it comes to indie wrestling specifically, it's going to be um, – Probably just like every other sport, it's gonna be a slow transition. But let me tell you, when it's a full, when it's allowed, when, when, when... All right. are you hearing? You hear the call? Yeah. Right. Talk about the tablet. Who's this? Yeah, it's Ben the Brit. You're right, guys. Oski, do you hear? You hear Ben? Yeah, I hear, I hear you, Ben. Oh, good, good, good. What's going on, Ben? What's going on, Ben the Brit? Sir, are you taking? Are you taking the piss? <laughs> It's really, really cool to fucking hear you guys on a podcast in a normal time of the day in England. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be what? It'll be like one o'clock over there now? Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, one o'clock, yeah. Oh, okay. So nailed it. So, Ben, um, first of all, how's, how's it been in, in England? How's a, we, we're, still, we're still secluded. We're still locked up in our, in our flats. Well, we're not injecting bleach yet, so that's a start. That's good. That's good. At least you have a man over there who's show some sense of intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's at it, so he he knows that he knows the shit that's going down. So, Oski, ask him Ben a question. Let me see if he hears you. Yo, uh, Ben, uh, what's your favorite type of trumpet? I call here Oski. Oh, he said, "What's your favorite kind of trumpet?" trumpet. What's my favorite kind of trumpet? I like a rusty trombone. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear me. He can't hear you. No, he can't okay, hear you. So I guess, well, I hear no, I can't hear. I can't hear all skill. Yeah, but 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 he he hears you clearly though. That's what apparently. So, um, oh, that's amazing, man. Yeah. All right. So um, so how how's it how how's it been the transition over there? Um, the the d- number of deaths are going down each day, which is good. Um, they're getting more. Well, the hospitals and all the. Uh, places you can get tested out and stuff are coping a lot better now. I think our country has pulled its finger out um, pretty sharpish, really. Uh, I think people were better under stress and pressure. Like they said, we haven't got enough beds, we haven't got be- enough ventilators. Well, that's all fine now. Mm-hmm. So we're coping okay. We're still on lockdown. Um, can only go out of the house for essentials, so food, if you have to go work like me and you, obviously. Right. Um, for your runs and all that kind of shit. So we're still on lockdown. We've been told we're going to be on lockdown for another three weeks um, and then see how we go after that. So hopefully within the next month, maybe maybe two, we might be off lockdown and just have social distancing. But we, we don't know. We'll uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, luckily, I just heard you, you know, your speech towards your uncle and all that. Luckily, none of my um, family have passed off it you know just yet maybe but obviously with me working in the the care homes uh, two of my residents have passed away in the last two days which is a bit shit wow but uh yeah which is pretty crap but we'll come out of it and the world will be a, a better place for it i think people will appreciate people more when all this is done and dusted because i'm speaking to my friends more than i usually do i'm speaking to people i haven't spoken to more than i usually do um, and people despite not being allowed out and sociable are more sociable right. so you know behind, like I always say about everything mate behind every po- uh, negative no matter how big there's always a positive no matter how small that's a good I'm just, it, well it, it's true I mean no matter what happens whether you know this is like awful fucking loads of people are dying but when it's all done there'll be some positives out of it like I said people will appreciate people more and the world will be a healthier place because there's less people being dicks in it so and let me tell you, you I, I give it up to you you brits over there you got some two tough motherfuckers over there that that uh, are are i guess the, the shining example of your country your your prime minister and your queen both had this shit and they both got out of it so that's a beautiful thing well, well the queen hasn't had it Oh, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was as if she got it. I was about to say, that tough old broad fucking beat that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boris, has, Boris had it, but he's recovered, and he's due back in uh, in work on Monday because he's a workaholic. Like, he got it because he refused to stay out of <laughs> the hospitals and stuff. Like He went around shaking everybody's hand and shit. And people were saying, no, don't do that because you might get it. He's like, well, then anyway, I've, got, I've got to show the people how strong of a prime minister i am so he did and he got it and he was out of hospital within a week 
good, good. But guy, there's also a guy, uh, you've probably not heard of him, but he's a 99-year-old war veteran who has raised £32 million because he's done uh, 100 laps of his garden and he's, he's had a song about him but it's also got to number one in the charts. So that guy is more of a fucking legend than any celebrity. Wow. That's beautiful. You see that? And, and, and like you said, a positive will come out of this one way or another. Positives do come out of it. Definitely. Uh, so how do you think that the fan base is going to go? How do you think it's going to happen in, uh, in, in jolly old England? How is it that the fan base you think are going to gravitate back to wrestling? Well, I think they should. I mean... I don't know whether it's, it's a good idea, but I think they should do a pay-per-view. Uh, the first show back when they can have fans should be like a celebratory pay-per-view kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so they're like, right, fans are now allowed back arenas, so here you are, we're going to do a pay-per-view. And make it a serious pay-per-view, not just a, oh, all the all the good guys win, all the bad guys loses. Like a proper fucking pay-per-view. And that should be like the celebratory start to having fans back in wrestling. But I must admit, I am kind of enjoying not having fans in wrestling at the same time. Because, like you always say, and I say as well, the worst thing about wrestling is... The fan the base. Fans. The fan base, yeah. I, I agree, 100%. And I quite enjoy not having fans there because I quite enjoy hearing the dialogue in the, uh, in the ring between the wrestlers and stuff. So, oh, okay. But yeah. If it was me, I would, I would have the first first show back would be a pay per view. You know, call it the they'll call it something shit like the comeback of wrestling pay per view or some shit like that. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, it'll be something like WWE presents Resurrection or some shit like that. Yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, something the Cure or some bullshit like yeah. that. Um, Co COVID COVID cure in your house or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they should, yeah, that's what I would do. I would have the first show back for the fans to be a big pay per view, and then the fans will come back then. So that that would be my way, anyway. Uh, well, Ben, thank you for calling in as always. And yes, it's it's it is a proper time for you to uh, to hear us, especially on a on a on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, if 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 Olski was able to, if you were able to hear Olski, he would tell you that he's enjoying your TikToks and uh, keep them coming. Yeah, I'm done with them now. Um, it's official that uh, after having my big fat belly and man boobs on show, I'm officially going to be single forever. Oh. Um, <laughs> welcome welcome but, to the club. It comes with bumper stickers and, um, and keychains. <laughs> but as long as uh, I've made people smile and maybe, in my dad's words, a little bit depressed and creeped out, um, wow. and made people laugh, that's all I'm bothered about. So. Do, is, but you still will have your TikTok? Uh, I've got it. I'm not. I probably won't do it anymore now. Okay, good because Turbo Tabloid is now on TikTok, so you can you will follow. You can see our stuff there. Your followers are there. There's only so many outfits I can get through, <laughs> and only so many masks I can get away with. I had two deleted off there for um, too much flesh on show. I mean, that's not hard when you've got when I'm 17 stone and got man tits anyway. But listen, it's never it's never too much flesh in my eyes, sir. It's never too much flesh. <laughs> Well, it is for the TikTok bully, so I don't fancy getting arrested. <laughs> but thanks again, Ben, for calling in, sir. All right, guys. I'll carry on watching anyway. So, yeah, speak soon. Thanks. Oski, you still there? I'm still here. Okay. So what do you think is the first bounce back that, that, that needs to happen in wrestling? Um, when it comes to wrestling in general, I, I just think that it, having some sort of audience reaction is, is what's missing here. I, I, you know... A lot of people hate sometimes the crowd. They hate the the, the chance. Uh, I think we took it for granted, but once once we come back from this um, this pandemic, I think that it's gonna start off. With... Oh, somebody else is calling in. Oh, sorry. Uh, call in again if you can. I don't know what the hell. Oh, there it goes. Too many calls. Hold on. What's this? Turbo tablet. Who's this? Yo, this is Henry. Henry, what's up, Poppy? What's going on, sir? What's up, Henry? Chill it, chill it, chill it. Oski said, what's yeah, up, Henry? Oh, Oski did a good job last night. I'm telling you that right now. Did he? Like, did uh, he really? Yeah, yeah, the scene was good, though. He was showing uh, what, the, the worst promos in wrestling, the worst matches 
the rest, yeah, he had me dying. All the videos he, he put up. He better because he, you know, he knows where his bird is butter because if he don't pull in his weight, <laughs> you know, he, he might be looking nah, at a nah. pink slip soon. Yeah, I, I was I was dying. I, we saw stuff uh, online that was ridiculous. Uh, but so another question is how does wrestling come back? From yeah, this how does especially uh, indie, you're an indie guy. You love indie wrestling. Um, yeah, not bad indie wrestling. Not bad indie wrestling. I said <laughs> not bad indie wrestling. But what, what yeah. what's the first things that 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 uh, promoters need to do to get the audience back into their seats? Ah. Uh, it's kind of hard. I mean, I think from all the indies that right now that may suffer and trying to get the fans back in, is uh, I believe it could be um, Impact because Impact, remember, Impact is uh, is running on um, on tape tape episodes and whatnot. Right. Uh, and the NWA Power could also have problems because NWA Power uh, they bring only a few, probably what hundred, probably two hundred fans in their studios. For them to do to bring all those people back, uh, it's, it's going to be crazy though because you know they, they're still talking about after June, maybe after July, social distancing. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to keep every fan six feet apart. And, and NWA right now is just the way they got their studio set up. Everybody's compacted in one. You know, what I'm saying Ring of Honor could do it because Ring of Honor right now, as of as of February, they didn't have a lot of fans coming to see them. You know, what I'm saying. Even though they were booking matches for April and beyond, and the matches were going to be good, so I'm sure they were going to bring all the fans back. So that could work for Ring of Honor, where they could have like the fans separated in like in a little arena or whatever. But I don't know how that's going to work because you have to probably have people in the front and, and, and checking people's temperatures to bring them in. Because I, I mean, I can't see if they they're going to. Keep putting these restrictions on people of uh, uh, six feet apart, or uh, whatever the case may be. I think the ones that, who are going to get hurt the most is Impact and NWA because NWA, like I said, their setup is compact. It's like a very small room. Unless you make a deal with somebody, that you say, okay, can I borrow your arena for a certain amount of time, and they have all the people six feet apart. And you still have fans, but then again, uh, does NWA Power have that money where they're going to put themselves in a different arena? Well, NWA uh, NWA records out of Georgia, so already they're they're about to get some some leeway to start recording. They should, they, yeah, but, but 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 it's not it's not about. I'm sure they're going to have you know because Georgia is just fucking out of whack to be honest. But you know, so you, you say forward, uh, you know what it is too. But you got you also got to understand certain things. Um, it's different when it comes to New York as opposed to other states. This is what Oski and I were talking about um, in the, the, the lead in the show and open the salvo, which is New York City is not going to open up as quickly as other states are because we're so compact on top of each other. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. we're, we're yeah. an urban, we're open, urban culture. So we're not going to be able to open up as quickly as everybody else. Those other states, you know, they have cities where they'll have, you know, the most is probably like a million, maybe two, if not, in there, thing, but everything else in that in that state is just open. It, it's just open country, you know. You you yeah, but, but, but I understand what you're saying. But what I'm saying is, it's it's not about it's not about um, you know, location where we live at. I'm just saying the way they studio is set up. Oh, no, 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 I, yeah, no, I get together. that. I get that because they, 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 they do bench seating. They have that the bleacher style seating, which is I get. Yeah, Listen, yeah. when NWA, if they could get twenty five. In the crowd, they'll be fine. They'll definitely be okay. Yeah, yeah, they'll be okay. Because um, I mean, I mean, these 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 shows like AEW, the AEW, uh, when they do their shows, they got like probably eight, probably twelve people out, which right. makes it a little bit better. And it and sounds it's fun. Silent. And it's not silent like when you watch a SmackDown Raw. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you be like, oh, I can't watch this. So unless they're gonna do that, that format. Where, like you said, maybe you know, even though it's compact, there's bleacher seating, whatever. I think honestly, the only way they could probably uh, guarantee the fans, um, how you call it, by going in is they're doing the temperature, um, like that clicking on your fucking forehead. Yeah, you got a gun or something like that. That's the only way I think they would do it. Like I said, right now, as far as the indie, uh, I, mean, I don't want to take time on your show, but 
the impact and NWA could be the one that could probably um, suffer the most as far as financially. Right. Ring of Honor, they got St. Clair. So I'm sure St. Clair, you know, this is Ring of Honor's a fucking write off to St. Clair. So they got other TV channels, and I'm sure they're getting revenues from all these commercials and all this bullshit. Uh, AEW is fine. Uh, New Japan is fine. But people like Impact and NWA, you know, um, I don't know. But by the way, real quick, Impact, they uh, they put those two shows for Rebellion, and they did some shitty shit. And I'm going to tell you that real quick. <laughs> Supposedly, they, 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 they taped the fucking Rebellion, right? So I'm over here like, yo, I want to watch Rebellion because I want to see that three-way between Eddie Edwards, Michael Elgin, and Tessa Blanchett. And the day off the fucking showing on TV, that's on the Twitter that Tessa Blanchett is stuck in Mexico. Eddie Edwards is stood at his home, and Michael Elgin was the only one on the sh- on the tape. I'm like, so we're not getting a fucking title match? I'm done with fucking Impact. Really? <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Yeah. That shit was all over Twitter. She got... She's stuck in Mexico, so how the fuck? They should have took that damn bell away from him a long time. Hey, listen, we I, I said she should have never gotten it anyway. But Henry, thanks again for calling in, and um, wow. meant to tell you it was a. I, I I listened back to the episode we did for your for for your podcast. It was fun to do it, and this week yeah. we'll discuss the opening rounds of the uh, the, the greatest team tournament. Oh, you know I'm calling. All right. All right, Henry. Thanks All for right, calling man. in, girl. And, and and be safe out there and and, and, and make sure you protect your, your your ladies over there. Yeah, my condolences to you and your family for your family loss, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh uh, good day. All right. So Oski. Yes. Will you go to an indie show? Let's say eight, the doors open up wide and um Quarantine Wrestling Federation is doing a show June, the first week of June. Will you go? Yes. No. Oh, okay. I'll go. I'll go. Um, I thought your paranoid ass would stay the fuck home. No, no, nah, man. Listen, I'm at this point where I feel like if if you if you if you if you, if you do the right precautions, if you wash your ass, if you clean your hands, I, I genuinely feel like we could make this work. Um, we lived. We. Uh, Human life has been never accustomed to staying home, so it, it just comes down to me to the, the the bare essentials of cleaning your ass and washing your hands. Indie wrestling could come back. It just it needs to come back at the right time. And let me tell you something real quick. You know damn well once we op- once we're allowed to go back outside, there's gonna be like 50 indie shows on the same night. Oh, you don't and- even, bro. <laughs> I swear to you. And let me tell you. They're going to fight. It's going to be like a turf war for that one night, one Saturday night on the peak Saturday night. Everyone's going to have the same fucking date. I'm going to I'm going to act as though like, you know, like I, 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 we have this grand scheme of how wrestling fans are going to react or, or, or how they're going to come back to the to 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 the the gym bingo halls, wherever the fuck or the warehouses the that they have. Listen, the Elks Lodges, I they're going to come out in droves because they want to get oh. the fuck out the house. Oh, it's going to be like a mosh pit. No, but it should be a thing to where, you know, depending on how the, the scenery is and what's going on, you can't be in the arena unless you get fucking, you have a mask on. Yeah, hold on a second. Turnbuckle Tabloid, who's this? What's up, Jay? What's up, Austin? Oh, no! What's up, guys? Marco, I was laughing because I think it was last week I was watching um, snippets and, and uh, videos from Lucha Fighter, and yeah, I gotta, I, I, I gotta say the referee was on point. He had me laughing. He had his mask on and he had his gloves on. He wasn't playing any games. <laughs> but that is, a, but I, but, up, yeah, but that, but that is a good thing. You got, you just sent me something where. Um, you know, the, the the even you guys in Mexico are are practicing your social distancing. You're still running; they're still running businesses. Um, is 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 it really suffering over there in Mexico with the with the lucha the lucha um forecast? Does the society out there? You no, know, actually, yeah, they're gonna do it on May third, and I think it's gonna it's gonna have the uh, original psychosis there. The, he, he is that the, that's not the one that slapped the shit out of fucking Conan, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. that's, that's, they, they know him here in Mexico like Psychosis Reaper. Oh, okay. That's another okay. guy. 
That's that's your place. This is me turning the Mario guy. Oh, okay, gotta make sure because I. I want to make sure because you know I I don't want to be that somebody get this this shit slapped again like on some some hood shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's a whole lot of that's that's another guy. That's this is the, the original one. He, he's from here from Tijuana, so. Uh, that's they're not gonna do that show. Oh, okay. Um, how's it been over there? What's the, how's the landscape over there? Is everything um flattening well, out for you guys over there? First. First of all, man, my condolences to you and your family, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sorry to, you. and and well, what can I say, man? It's you know, well, here in Mexico, we're a whole different species here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing we're doing a lot of stupid things like throwing rocks with water to <laughs> to <laughs> nurses and doctors. That's not cool, and. Oh, no. On the south of, south of Mexico, they actually they beat up a nurse because they thought she had coronavirus. So oh my goodness! They're doing a lot of stupid. Yeah, they're doing a lot of stupid, shitty things. They're, they're, people here are being idiots, idiots, and some of them, not all of them, but uh, like uh, talking on a positive note uh, on the professional basketball uh, team here in Tijuana, they canceled the games, of course, but they, they're gonna. Put the gymnasium or the stadium, whatever they call it, to be like a COVID uh, refugee for people who are not that sick from COVID, but they need to be in ice, uh, isolated. Oh, isolation, yeah. All, all the people, yeah. So they're doing a lot of cool stuff too. People are like uh, doing live streams and uh, local bands doing uh, live streams. Uh, they're doing like live shows, playing their music and all that. So they're doing a lot of cool stuff, but uh, there's so many stupid people not practicing social distancing. Like the east of like, the city of Tijuana, they're not doing that. You think they're like in a movie or I don't know. They're walking dead or I don't know. <laughs> I can only but, imagine that. It's like I can hear the guys in and I go, the only corona I'm scared about is when the six pack runs out, Holmes. <laughs> yeah, actually, beer here right now. Beer is more uh, it's, it's more expensive than than gasoline right here. <laughs> yeah, because I heard that they that they closed the um they were closing the the Corona factory for now the Modelo um factory. Yeah. Wow. Yes. 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 Because they, they, they well yeah yeah here in Mexico they yeah. yeah Oski I'm fucked yeah, I don't I'm know I'm, I'm gonna have to find another enough. beer to drink. <laughs> yeah, try, no, might, might go to that man. white claw. They have, they're, they're rationalizing. They're they're uh, they're carrying uh, like with uh, very very uh, careful, uh, very careful in carrying the, the beer. So you know, whatever. But those guys are. That's the thing, man. If people don't get it, that this is there are many people saying that this isn't real. This isn't happening, and they're doing like the thing with the 5G antennas from that that spreading the coronavirus. I don't know. They have a lot of conspiracy theories. Here. Oh, please so, stop it, man! People said the same shit about microwaves. Believe me, we still fucking warm up our burritos and our fucking our flat our flats from our chicken wings and this. Shit, so we'll be fine. Why did it have to be a burrito? <laughs> Duh! I'm talking to a Mexican. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Marco, be, Marco, before we let you go, what is the um? What's the big thing that you're waiting for once wrestling comes back in full swing? You know what, man? Uh, I hope this uh, brings us together and value more the the, the, the matches and what you, what you, the kick you get from all the live events. So hope that till the companies do something with the rosters and all that, like right now they're doing uh, on AEW and WWE. Right. But they need to push a little bit more real wrestlers. Guys are doing the, the, the job and, and trying to sell and all that. So I'm expecting better things from wrestlers and luchadors and all there. All right, Marco. Thank you for calling in as always. And as always, Marco's out there doing big things. He's still he's still sharing and showing what he's doing within his community, helping the, 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 the children out there, and as well as showing his love for wrestling. Thank you, sir, for calling in as always. Thank you, Marco. And, uh, Whatever it takes, man, to help you guys, you know, I got your back, man. Thank you, and sir. And Oski was cool in that. I love the faces of Oski. 
doing, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> the biggest thing. Can you, <laughs> He's can going, you, I'm done. Can you imagine? That's exactly what he. Thing. That's exactly what his girlfriend sees after he finishes having sex. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the biggest thing, uh, Blue Love the Butcher and the Clown. I don't know what, what the hell. The it only lasts like 63 seconds. So, <laughs> and the <laughs> broadcaster, like, put him, put him, put him. He did like 63 times of this. He said, fuck. So, We'll um uh, well, well well we'll get him motivated because as I know Oski he'll do it for two nights and then we won't hear from him for another six months so they, they... <laughs> so Marco thank you for calling in as always sir later. <laughs> Do, you know, you gonna I, bury my shit, son? I'm a, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a shovel that shit. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a spike through that shit. Wow, thanks. Um, Fuck you. You know, the one thing that he spoke about live events. WWE has been, it's, it, it's been told that even after this, they're gonna minimize on the, on the live events. You think that's a, that's yeah. a good thing for them to do? I do think that's a good thing for them to do. I think it keeps them, keeps their guys healthy. It, it makes the main shows important in terms of, um. It makes the matches fresh because, I mean, listen, um, the one positive, the one positive when it comes to live shows is it gives the, it gives time for wrestlers to gel together and it gives them time to like really work um, as a unit and see how they can, how they work in terms of chemistry. It's their dojo. Uh, live events are their, are their, um, yeah, their dojo. Their, yeah, that's uh, where they work out their stuff. That's where they, they, they... That's, yeah, so, I mean, in that stature, it's, I feel like they should at least do a live event. I feel like I feel like in my opinion they should do one super live event show a week. They don't need to do fucking four. They don't need three. Uh, give me one live super show with Raw and SmackDown guys, and you can really sell tickets there. And it gives a chance to put those main storylines you want to give a try out there. Um, live events are important, but not five days a week. Um, Holding back on those is going to be a good way to keep them healthy, and especially during these coronavirus times, I think it could save them a little bit of money. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Because, they were actually losing money with that shit. Yeah, they were losing money. Yeah. Um, they, they were drawing the first three rows of a fucking of of of, um, of Slurpee Stadium over there in fucking Cucamonga, Wyoming. Um, so if you think about it, like it saved them money, and I think if they make it the live events more exclusive, it'll it'll it'll, it'll make them more important to go see. I always said I, I've, I've always make it exclusive and make it smaller. You don't need to be in these big venues. No, no, I want to see I want to see I want to see a WWE live event at like I don't know, like I mean, New York has a lot of big big stadiums, but you know what I mean, like uh, you know I know what you're saying like downside. No, go back to fucking um what you call it to uh, Manhattan Center and shit. Hold on a second. Turn Marco Tabloid, who's this? This is Ryan. Hey, Ryan, what's going on, hey. sir? How are you doing? I'm doing well, Ryan. Thank you for calling in. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm doing all right. You staying away from the COVID? Oh, yeah. Very good. Make sure you wash your hands and wash your face and wash your oh, ass. Uh, like, first of all, I'd like to say, I like to say, uh, I like to say, man, he done good his show last night. Oh, you enjoyed Oski's show too? Yeah. You know, oh, Ryan, um, yes, between you and I, I helped him with that. I just wasn't on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you like? What'd you like about what Oski did on the show? I like the way he showed the old clips. Yeah, you like the old clips? It made yeah. you it made you think about the good old days of wrestling? Oh yeah, he showed some of the clips I grew up on. Oh really? Yeah. Did you it seems as though everybody liked the Jake the Snake clip. They pretty much were fans of Jake the Snake and his uh his walk into the ring. But, did you like did you did you like seeing the Shockmaster? I did. <laughs> uh but last night, SmackDown anniversary was good. Oh, you enjoyed the anniversary. We're gonna talk about it later in the in the show. Did you enjoy uh, the the Triple H twenty uh, fifth anniversary of, of being in wrestling? Yeah. Ryan, did you go to independent wrestling shows? 
Uh, mm, I didn't. No? I no, I didn't. I'm not. Nope, I wouldn't go. <laughs> no, we got, you wouldn't go. <laughs> you wasn't going then, and you won't go later on. You won't go now. Nope. Any 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 other guys in your neighborhood do backyard wrestling? Uh, some of my friends do. Yeah. Would you pay tickets to see them do backyard wrestling? Nope. <laughs> I, I didn't. Hey, I didn't go. Why well, should go now? Ryan, you Ryan, you got a TikTok? I do. Oh, Ryan, we gotta you gotta play your TikToks on Facebook because we gotta find you. <laughs> We got to find Ryan. Ryan, make sure you guys who listen support Ryan and his TikTok because, boy, I could only imagine what the man is going to put out there for the universe. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, Ryan, for calling in, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Have a good I think you know, it will take time for uh, the WWE in wrestling. They, I'm kind of enjoying not having no fans. Uh, but do you watch All Elite Wrestling as well? Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. See, so you're, you're, I, you're just not a WWE guy. You watch a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm kind of enjoying it because I can hear anybody. I wish they keep that way. Good, because you know what? It, it sounds like that when you had a, in, 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 an indie show back in like in uh, in, in, in Boxwella, Atlanta, Georgia, like the the, 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 back, the back hills of the country, and there's only yeah. like five people in the crowd, you hear the same thing. But yes, Ryan, thank you for calling in, sir. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. day. You too, sir. Bye. Boy, you know we gotta we gotta get Ryan's TikTok. You know we need that. Oh, that's gotta come on ASAP. We Rocky needs Wood. that in our life, boy. Needs it. Needs it. So it's 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 all elite suffering right now with uh the lack of no. crowd. No, no, not at all. AEW is actually the one show that I don't think is suffering at all. I think AEW is actually flourishing right now. Um, AEW is making it work. They, they, they have one side of the of the the crowd that's heel, one side of the crowd that's face, and they're doing what they can. Uh, they're trying. Uh, AEW is definitely trying to be innovative here, and they're trying their best to be creative on all four fronts with the with the flim flams and the and the and the. The rand, the the fucking the, the the two sides of the audience with the with the wrestlers in it. Um, they're trying to be creative. I think AEW is the problem here. I think WWE j- is just stuck in their non-creative ways, and they're just doing everything they can to just pass by this without trying. I think I think Impact did it right, regardless of what people say. I think they Impact did it right. Has, yeah, I saw I saw videos. Impact had a good uh, presentation. Yeah, but I think they did it right as well, to where they just started cranking out as much shows as they could, and was helping making sure that their 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 wrestlers were protected. So I, I thought I thought it was a good look for them to do that. And yep. uh, AEW's back live in two weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good um that's a good time frame to look at. So yeah, uh, I mean um you know things things are happening quickly day by day when it comes to this so we we don't know we don't know how how it'll start opening up for everywhere else but but what i'll tell you Red, real quick is is this we're talking about how wwe and wrestling in general is going to come back after this when i tell you the wrestling business is going to be booming when this is done that's an understatement when I the shittiest of indie shows will be packed wwe <laughs> next year's wrestlemania if wrestlemania is in a stadium next year i will promise you this there will be tears in the eyes of those wrestlers next year, and I think it'll be the most emotional night we've seen in a long time. Because from 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 uh, looking back a year, which was now, you know, in the performance center to then, you can't tell me that guys like Drew McIntyre and um, and and even Ricochet and these guys aren't going to look at the stadium and go, "Yo, I took you out for granted, son." Who, I, I, this who is the fuck crazy. knows? They might not even they might not, might not even have a job after a while. The way the WWE is fucking going. Yeah, yeah, they might not, but I'll tell you, wrestling is going to be booming. It's, it's going to be a slow process, like everything. Everything's going to take time. Not, the Rome isn't going to be built in a day. If you expect Raw to be filled to capacity at Barclays Center in June, you're wrong. But what I can tell you is that each wrestling company is going to take their precautions slowly. They're going to take it day, week by week, 
And sooner rather than later, I think that we're going to start seeing we're, – they're definitely going to be selling their own custom masks. I'll tell you that much. I t- I, and as well as they should. I've, we've been pitching it for the longest. Do you I, see masks as a, as, a, as a need for the rest of our lives? No. No. And I'm not and – and once again, I'm not going to go along with this whole fear-mongering shit that, oh, there's going to be a second wave. You're not going to know the difference between – so far, and I'm going to be honest with you. Am I concerned? Yes. But – I'm not on that level of this fear mongering shit that the media is doing. I think that at the end of the day, we are going to find out that we're going to get over this. And the only thing that we're going to really need to do is police ourselves, know how to look at things differently now and start monitoring how we treat ourselves. I think this is actually a big wake up call. Yeah. It's a very big wake up call with hygiene, with, um, with taking, with, with bathing yourself, health care. How about you know? I'm off about, popping you know, vitamins time, now. They popping fucking vitamins. Hell next yeah! Time I, next time I go to Club Up Amazora, um, uh, maybe the bathroom will be full of piss all over the seats. Man, you just COVID ass sink. What the fuck is going on with this COVID nineteen sink? Y'all better clean this shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Club, I love, I love you, Amazora, but your bathrooms are dirt shit. So, <laughs> but uh, I think wrestling is gonna when, be booming. I when, think, when, I think when Elslaw's think... bathroom is better than Amazora's bathroom. It, no, it is one hundred and twenty-five percent. Even the fucking, um, even Ultimate Fitness with a Nutcracker inside of it's better. Um, <laughs> but I will tell you that um, I am not worried with the sport world, the wrestling world, because when we come back from this. Every arena, and I mean every arena, even the shittiest of arenas. I'm telling, even Miami Marlins Stadium will be packed to the brim. It's gonna take a while, and I think it's gonna start off with one person every couple of seats. I do think they're gonna start bringing people in, but I think movie theaters are gonna start opening soon, where they're gonna do one person every two seats, and it's gonna be like a that sort of thing. Only like one other seat's gonna be fucking be able to be purchased. But listen, like I said, everything happens in transition. And I think that's a really good first step. And I think when indie wrestling comes back, everyone's going to be chomping at the bit for a show. No matter who else, no matter who's on the fucking card, we're going to want to go. And when WWE and AEW come back to to the crowd, it's going to be emotional for me because when I see the roar of the crowd again, it's, it's, it take you know, you, you don't, you don't, you don't know what you lost until you lost it. You don't know what you had until you lost it. And yeah. I think that um, with wrestling, especially, I think it just shows that, no matter what response you get, it's better than nothing, man. And, and, and that's what it is. It, you're 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 basically dealing with the situation right now where uh, guys are out of business or, or or not running anything right now. So the only thing that we can do right now is support, especially indie guys. The indie guys who who haven't been getting their bookings for the for the weekends and stuff like that. Right. Support. Uh, look for their merchandise. Look for at their websites. Shout out they... to Dolph Ziggler because Dolph Ziggler is randomly buying under an anonymous name a bunch of indie shirts. As well as they should, and I'm telling you, it's a beautiful thing that's, that that we need to do to give back. The problem is that I won't buy a lot of them shirts because a lot of them are tacky. So I don't. Yeah, know. <laughs> they are, and a lot of them shrink. A lot of them don't have like they're not really you know stylish and shit. But if you guys have like good designers and they're cool looking shirts i'll fucking buy I'll, hell yeah i'll get a shirt i'll buy a shirt you know support guys who's been on the show especially like an eric jaden uh dominic de Niro, uh uh akiro kwan uh the jordan hank oliver. flanders jordan, jordan oliver selling uh, masks. Hank, Fl- hank flanagan jordan, jordan oliver jordan oliver is actually selling masks on twitter so if you guys want to go check that out go yeah around. check it on check jordan oliver guys like that guys who 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 like a mike harvey guys out there who who are just need a little extra, a little extra something. Uh, Jay George Estrega. These are guys who were on the show recently, and uh, even a bunch of other guys as right now. That's not um, that's not it's not getting the 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 bookings that they should be doing because of this pandemic. So go out there and support them. Show their videos. Show uh, share their 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 YouTube pages, and then and, and get these guys bookings for when they come back. And when, and when we come back, I want to see all you asses in those seats, giving these guys a round of applause, standing ovation. Because when I tell you when I'm gonna when I tell you I'm gonna get emotional the day we go back to an indie show, I'm not lying. I'm I'm telling you one thing. If anybody get way too close to me, I'm gonna fucking elbow them and tell them, hey, 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 hey. Remember, remember where we were at not too long ago. Yep. Don't fucking take that for granted, pa. COVID nineteen, and then just start spraying them with Lysol. Uh, the fabuloso. Back up, son. Back up. Back up. 
Like so, a fucking taser. So, guys, when we come back, we're going to have a uh, wrestling rundown. And for you guys who have been watching on Facebook Live, Thank you. Thank you for being a part of our Facebook Live. Thank this, you, guys. At this time, early in the morning on a Saturday morning, uh, I know I know Ben enjoyed it because it was at a proper time for him in English and, and in England, excuse me. And um, for Marco, it, is, does he ever fucking sleep? Like, it, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's like 7 in the morning for him over there. Shit. And he was up late doing live stream after he was on my show. Yeah, so, man. So, um, guys, God. thanks for being a part of it and sharing uh, on Facebook Live. And uh, go, don't go anywhere. There's more episode. Download, stream, share. There's more episode. More. We have a whole interview in two more segments. Exactly. James. This week. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We will return.